Hi, everyone. Good morning uh, for this uh, second session of our um, Focus Talk series. So, um, Adeline Blanchard, responsible for visual arts at Institut Francais. And this is, uh, so this is the second series today. Uh, Focus is a program by Institut Francais inviting curators and um, institutions, directors from all over the world to come to France to discover the French art scene. Uh, so this year, uh, due to COVID, uh, we were not able to invite you uh, to come to France um, and that's why we decided to um, to launch this uh, series of talks. So today I'm very glad to welcome uh, artist uh, Wilfried Almondra uh, from Marseille uh, in conversation with Cédric Fock, curator at uh, Palais de Tokyo. Uh, so they are, I mean, uh, Wilfried is having um, a solo show at Atlantis Lumière in Marseille uh, right now. And um, so, yeah, just in a few words to introduce uh, your work. So you are um, a French Portuguese artist who were born in uh, 1972. Um, and uh, so you, you, the architectural references in your work are found in shapes and surfaces around us. Uh, you also refer to the designs of major architects of the modern era, uh, and you question social class divisions, uh, labor and uh, alternative economies. Uh, recently, um, your work so has been shown in solo shows at uh, different places, such as uh, Vrana Park Museum, uh, in Sofia in Bulgaria, at Clark House Bombay in India, uh, also Palais de Tokyo in Paris, um, and um, also um, on group shows at Moco Montpellier, uh, also at CAC uh, Vilnius, Kunsthalle Wien, um, Museum of Contemporary Art uh, in Chicago, uh, Witte de Witt Rotterdam, CAPC <laughs> in Bordeaux, and so on and so on. Um, and uh, Cédric, uh, so you're uh, currently a curator at Palais de Tokyo, so since earlier this year, and it's a new position. Uh, previously, you were a curator at Nottingham Contemporary um, since uh, 2017, uh, and you have uh, developed exhibition projects uh, related to uh, feminism, gender, resistance, um, you've situated um, performances um, with artists such as Lulu Sainsbury, uh, Stephanie Jemison, uh, so you've been doing publications. Um, you co-directed uh, Clearview Limited in London, and you were a member of um, the Baltic Triennale um, 13. Um, yeah. So I will pass on you the word, Cédric, uh, to start the conversation with Wilfried on this um, solo show um, at Atlantis. So we would be happy to, um, to know more about it. Cool, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so the way we, we kind of, um, I mean, first, hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. It's a first, uh, I think, for Wilfrin and I to kind of um, introduce and um, and uh, go through the, the exhibition online. <laughs> um, it just opened uh, at the end of uh, August, um, and since then, um, we Wilfrid specifically were, was able to like be in the space a lot. Lots of people actually came, um, despite the COVID nineteen crisis. Um, and um, I, I was only there like for, for a few days uh, for living and coming back to Paris. So it's, it's kind of interesting for me to um, get back to, to, to the show and the project. Um, and at the same time, a bit weird to do that um, via Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but hopefully we get to kind of give you the substance um, of the show. Um, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how much you can get of it, even that a lot of a lot of um, a lot of the work is actually based on uh, how you inhabit the space. 
and there is a lot also in terms of textures um, and how you wander around the space. But um, I think we, we will try to kind of um, give you a, a bit of the, an idea via the, the images, the documentation of the show. Um, but first, um, maybe I'll say a little bit about how we started to work together and then Wilfried, you, you, you can uh, say a few words and then we go back, we, we, we start, we start displaying pictures for us to kind of go uh, step by step uh, through the show and explain some of the choices, decisions, and, and then we can also think about um, everything that is kind of around the show itself. Um, is that okay for everyone? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Wilfried. Um, so I'm so... My English is so bad, <laughs> but I try to explain. I think the first things uh, I need to 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 introduce myself, and um, so I'm French artist. I come from uh, the Portuguese diaspora. I was raised in the small town in the, um, in Nantes, between uh, Nantes and Angers. It's, uh, the name is Cholet. It's in the west coast. So I grew up in, um, in the contact with the Portuguese community, uh, which we called, uh, say, very much a blue collar community. Uh, before being a, a, an artist, I was a truck dri driver. Uh, I worked with my dad who uh, had business delivering uh, the gas for the people. Um, so my dad uh, came to France when he was uh, 15. He left Portugal because of uh, Salazar uh, dictatorship and poverty. Um, well, so I work with my dad uh, for a while and uh, also run the business for him. Um, before that, I worked in the meat factory. So basically, I was not uh, mean to be an artist. Um, uh, so that's where I come from, and it's very, I think, important for uh, for everybody to to to, to, to maybe <laughs> in intro to my work. Um, so uh, in my work, uh, I'm interested uh, in uh, looking with the community function, uh, also the the use the material is really important for me and what the people might project in the material or what meaning uh, uh, material carry. Um, I've been interesting also alternative economy on uh, how we create the value. Um, the idea of exchange also is very important in my production. And, um, and I'm also interested in the norm and value system. Uh, uh, yeah, so the idea of fragility also is very in my production. I'm interested of this, the space where you think become uh, possible. For, for example, in my blue collar community, we would uh, spend a lot of time in the uh, community garden. And I think uh, that is a space of uh, invention, of poetry, uh, resilience, and deconstruction. So uh, all of this present is in the show. And perhaps, uh, perhaps, Cedric, you can. Uh, you can, you can, yeah. you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say to us about how we kind of um, established uh, a working relationship, which actually, I mean, we, we met more than a year ago um, as I was in Marseille um, for something else. <laughs> it was it was a fantastic moment. <laughs> <laughs> then we met uh, at uh, Wilfried's uh, studio slash um, project space, um, Adelaide, uh, which which is located on the which was located because it's no longer a, a, a space you have now. But I think it's going to be important to get back to this 
um, but a space that uh, was located on the same street of the space where the exhibition is taking place uh, now, Atlantis. Um, and we met there um, and we had a very kind of, um, yeah, I think, great conversation that was like not only around art, but also very much about this idea of uh, uh, social class. And that's, that's, I think, for people who might know a little bit of what I've done in the past and for people who know what we've done in the past, the matching was not kind of obvious. Um, and um, and actually, we kind of met halfway uh, very easily, um, and 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 from from a, ve a very early stage of our conversation, um, Wilfried then invited me to to work with him on on the exhibition, and followed on uh, ongoing conversation um, that um, that um, gave birth to the show which is called uh um which is called so much depends upon a red wheel barrow um which is a title that comes from um a poem um by william carlos william um and and very very quickly will fit uh i mean a lot actually um has changed in the project in relation to how it was being devised in the first place because it was um something that um, was meant to kind of grow in different places. So it was meant to kind of happen in three different spaces, uh, but because of the COVID situation, things had to um, get uh, a bit more, um, a bit more uh, uh, together um, and, and in one place. So, so we very early on decided to like focus on the uh, Atlantis space. Um, and actually, it was also happening at the time when you were changing studio. So when when you were moving from Adelaide to a bigger space, um, which is in um, in the suburbs of Marseille, um, in a, in a former um, upholstery uh, and and fabric textile uh, workshop, and that is very very important because actually the some of the some of the elements that are in the show um, were um, material that Wilfried found. I mean, and specifically one thing, um, something that Wilfried found uh, in that new studio. I think unfortunately we don't have pictures of the studio. <laughs> Just so <laughs> that. <laughs> um, so we were keeping the mystery. I'm just going to start uh, displaying images. Um, you have to come. Uh, share screen. Also, I'm, I, we haven't said anything, but if you have any questions or um, remarks or comments, don't hesitate to just jump in uh, and ask. I think it's it's a very informal informal presentation. Nothing has been kind of scripted. So. <laughs> Can you see? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's basically what you what you uh, see when you enter the space. Um, but maybe to, to give you like a kind of an overview of the whole space, the floor plan is useful. So you have two rooms this one and this one um and you enter through through a door that is located here if you can see my uh uh can you see the icon uh moving yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool so you enter and you're right here and uh the gesture that we basically were interested in um uh, enacting was to basically block a certain view um, um, of the exhibition space. And uh, I was speaking about uh, a component that Wilfried would have found in, his, in, the, in the studio where he just moved in. And that's basically that uh, piece of material here, the main piece, uh, which is actually, which we called in the technical terms, uh, martyr. But let me write it down because I'm not sure, I'm, I think I'm not, I'm not pronouncing it uh, properly. Um, 
Oh no, I cannot write that anymore. Do you want to use a chat? I think, or, but I think I need, yeah. Or I, do you want to share on your screen? You can write it on the chat. Yeah. I'm not sure about Martin. Yeah. Very good. Martyr. Yeah. Um, basically, I mean, obviously that we know in relation to a religious um, context. Um, and, um, but here it's, it's basically, it basically um, defines a surface that is used uh, as a, to be sacrificed basically. So it's a, it's a piece of wood against which you, um, you put other materials and that you use to avoid um, teaming up fabrics uh, or um, damaging uh, another piece of material. Um, and so that's, that's, I mean, it's basically a piece of material suffering for another one. Um, and that's why it's called a, a, a martyr. But um, Wilfried was interested in, in this piece of material because of the kind of history it contains. Um, so it's kind of a condensed, um, kind of con condensed a lot of the history that the, the, the places where the place where he works now um, has uh, seen um, in terms of uh, labor. And that's, I think, like very much important in, in, in uh, Wilfried's practice. There is a lot of this idea of um, labor, um, like efforts um, as well, um, not in the way that uh, it's not something that is so much kind of, um, that is so much kind of uh, celebrated per se, I would say. Uh, but more actually thinking about the, the, the difficulties of that and in relation to social um, to, to social class, obviously something that, that has to be questioned very much. And I think that's also where what Wilfried was saying about uh, his uh, background and uh, the work that he was doing with his father in the first place uh, is important. Um, and the structures that you're going to see in the show um, are actually very much um, related to a reflection, a reflection on uh, community gardens. So it's also something that Wilfried, uh, Wilfried mentioned earlier uh, as a space where um, um, he, he also experienced uh, um, and grew up in. Um, and that's, that's, that was kind of one of the starting points of the show, um, thinking about the spaces as, as spaces where you could hide, uh, where you could, where you, yeah, some kind of a space of uh, freedom and agency, um, basically. And the kind of, at the same time, thinking about the fragile uh, and precarious uh, ar architecture of the spaces. Um, so the sculptures themselves, I mean, I don't know if it's something that is so visible, um, yeah. but you can see it very well. Yeah. But they are, they are. They're, they're somehow fragile themselves. They have some kind of vulnerability um, in them. They're not like they're not like um, structures that seem to hold uh, themselves so so easily. Um, they need they need those kind of, they need those kind of structures to be able to like uh, hold uh, um, and and be freestanding. Um, I'm just going to go through some images. Yeah. Here we're in the second room. So again, we have like uh, some of the, uh, some structures that are playing with this idea of hide and seek, trying to kind of um, um, block uh, a certain 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 perspectives uh, on on the exhibition um, and actually in the text that I wrote there is there is something that is very kind of that I have emphasized a lot is this this idea of basically the um, viewers uh, people visiting the show becoming warriors um, and having to adopt some kind of yeah voyeuristic approach to the whole exhibition because of the 
because of the, the way they need to stand in front of those sculptures. So what's very interesting with this one is basically that you have that play on transparency through like different surfaces. Uh, and also the height itself is basically in kind of um, um, leading you to, to, uh, to kind of get on your tiptoes basically and, and try to kind of see above um, for, for people that are not, not uh, that are a bit tall, maybe it's not for everyone, but it depends. It depends on the different structures of the of the show, and it's also something that you have here actually as well with that uh, that work. Um, for instance, here, because they you have that you have that uh, structure here that is blocking um, the way, so you cannot you cannot access it directly. You need to also lean on. Um, this uh, piece of um, piece of wall to be able to get closer to the to the sculpture, and the sculpture itself is actually made out of uh, a specific glass that doesn't allow you to see through completely, um, and so it's all the the whole show is playing with like those different surfaces, um, this idea of like hiding. Um, specifically coming into play in relation to those sculptures that are on the floor um, that look like, and maybe even more on, on images that look like real fabric or real shoes here um, or real socks, but that are actually made out of um, aluminum. Yeah, just of aluminum. Yeah. You want to say a bit more about the the kind of process, or um, yeah. Uh, so, for example, the shoes. Uh, it's um, this piece talk about the painting uh, because it's uh, it's like a fake, you know. It's it looks like a real, but it's not real. And the process is very important because the cast of aluminium, the process is uh, is very long and precise. Uh, so when you are in the space, you the first thing uh, it's like oh, is it real? But if you don't know the process and uh, the quality of the material, it's uh, another way. Uh, so and the same thing for the for the Marcel for for the T-shirt. So it's the same process. So it, it looks like. Uh, a real, but it's not a real. It's uh, yeah, so it's some kind of a. Uh, and, uh, and you talk about also in this show, I we we talk about the body, but we we never see the body because the body is like a ghost body. So um, this thing is very important, and it's the same for the paint and the the. Just have one real thing. This is the the the, the box of pills. So these things to to talk about the, also the the body. But uh, we mm -hmm. need some medication. We need some and it's the same thing for the for the martyr. The small piece uh, of the martyr or Ginette is the same thing. Uh, the the pipe. It's uh, I for for making this. Uh, this uh, object, I use two silicone different. One uh, chemical industrial uh, silicone, and I mix with uh, with a pharmaceutical. Is right? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, pharma, uh, pharma, 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 right? silicone. So it's the same silicone you put on your body, and when you mix together to silicone it look like uh, if you have some things like gray and and the process is uh, don't stop so it's uh, it's, uh, it's each yeah each day is different and you have like a, a very strange strange situation with uh, this material yeah so, it's it's both kind of um I mean, what was interesting to me when Wilfried showed me that the first time, I had both like some kind of a desire to touch it <laughs> and at the same time, <laughs> uh, kind of like also grossed out somehow by, by, by the thing because it, it looks alive. It's 
quite um, it's quite amazing. And and I think by having um, this kind of um, uh, mix uh, of the two city codes um, interacting with the sculptures uh, directly. Um, so you have them here. When you enter the space, you realize it's here, and then uh, it comes back um, further on, further away in the show here on this one, which is basically the, well, you could, you could say the last sculptural elements uh, of the show, and it appears twice. But it's also, um, I don't know if you have a detail of this, but I'm going to show here. It's also basically kind of infusing here um, the, the, the architecture itself uh, of the base on which the, this sculpture is shown. Um, and then kind of like uh, turning into cement. Um, but what, what's interesting, I think, here is the, the way it creates some kind of a underground network between the, the sculptures uh, and asking, asking, asking if the sculptures are feeding themselves off of uh, this, this kind of liquid or if they are actually like uh, somehow vomiting it. I mean, it also obviously has a very kind of sex, I mean, it has sexual connotations as well. Um, and it's not the only one in the show. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but I think that idea of um, some kind of underground network um, that is like feeling filling the exhibition is also very important in relation to um, another gesture um, that will feel enacted in the, in the exhibition which are those pillars here. So, so basically those have been covered um, with like a material that is used uh, usually in like parking lots, um, for instance, or like big surfaces. Um, and it enables uh, to inifugate, to, to get, it's like a fire retardant. Um, thing basically right yeah. yeah yeah and and it was i mean it is used in the space everywhere <laughs> basically in the i mean it, it was everywhere uh, kind of on the on the ceiling and one thing that uh, we really was specifically kind of um very interested in um is this pipe here um which is basically a uh uh, how do you say? Uh, when the sewage is, is uh, coming through. And I think the, the Wilfried was always telling me about the way he thought that it was quite interesting, the way that we were sh quite often showing um, contemporary art um, in places which had those kind of pipes um, going through the spaces, which are basically the intestines of um, the spaces, like it's basically where toilets are. Uh, uh, are pa passing through, um, and and this kind of paradox was uh, was something um, we feel was interesting in. Um, but going back to this idea of the this kind of underground network, um, what well, basically those two columns they are here in the first place, and they have um, they have that mat mat like they have that material on them as well. But what we did is like to, to kind of enhance. Uh, so it's like, if you know the space, you will notice that they kind of, they kind of blew up. Uh, if you don't, you kind of ask yourself the question, I guess, because of the, the way um, the material is also dropping on the, on the, um, on the floor. Um, but it's kind of interesting. I think actually the first time I came to that space, I myself got a lot of this material on my clothes because I did not realize how that how, what it was and that it was also that so um it has that kind of weird feeling because it's it looks both like dust and at the same time uh uh it's not um and 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 so the the whole space basically is kind of like infused with energy um but I think the, this this interventional architecture is also kind of telling of um, how Wilfried works 
um, with spaces, it's not only about like putting sculptures um, in a space, it's very much trying to think about how things inhabit um, spaces. Uh, and actually, one, one interesting thing as well in relation to, to the show is that it's the last exhibition that is taking place in that space. Um, and I was also saying about that, uh, I mean, the fact that Wilfried Studio was located, located in the same street before that, but he had to leave recently, is because the whole thing is being like, um, uh, uh, has been bought by developers. And basically like two years ago or three years ago, they, like uh, those developers tried to make a deal. I mean, they invited lots of galleries and collectors and artists to kind of establish themselves in this area. Uh, of the city to open up like temporary projects, spaces. And basically it's now the time where everyone has to go because they have other plans. <laughs> um, but I think in relation to what uh, Wilfried's um, work is dealing with um, and the, the just the fact that he had to move from one, one workshop, one studio to another and uh, and the fact that this exhibition that was devised in that new studio is coming back to the street where he had his studio and where we met. I don't know, the whole cycle um, um, is, is to me quite interesting and, and I think beautiful somehow. Um, we've spoken about a lot of things, um, but we have we, yeah. like made one <laughs> or two things we haven't spoken of yet. Um, going back to, may I ask one question? So going back to the body, the, its presence and absence in the exhibition. So um, you didn't mention the titles of the artworks. They all relate, I have the impression that they all relate to one person and to one specific story that happened, between, I mean, a personal story with Wilfried or maybe a fiction, fictional story. Uh, we don't know exactly. And um, also, maybe the, the 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 coming back to the closing is it uh, a reference to you, uh, Wilfried, uh, yeah. as an artist? Uh, yeah, not just me, but for example, the shoes is a reference here of a friend of me, uh, Nick uh, Nick Devreux, It's a painter, and yeah, the t-shirt. It's my t-shirt and my socks and my pen, but um, each piece have a name like uh, it's a it's a, in the beginning with with Cedric we, we talk about the narrative situation so we try to make uh, something like that something like narrative and um, it's why I decide to um, to give a name like a personal name each uh, for each piece and for for example the t-shirt in France it's Marcel but Marcel is a name also. So it's the name of the clothes, but it's the name of a personal name. So for example, with this object, you have two way, two way, two ways different. So it's each time it's, uh, I think it's, it's uh, you have to, you have to decide what kind of way you want to take. It's a kind of signature in a way because in when you go through the space you you found the the Marcel of the artist uh, it's trousers you can see shoes you don't know if they are these are the shoes of the artist or not you can see your um also the socks <laughs> so it's a kind of yeah signature each for 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 the for the shoes and for Marcel for the t-shirt it's uh, it's a clothes for it's a worker clothes yeah. So it's um, it's a link with the, this idea of labor of uh, but uh, you know for for example martyr we talk about the fra fabric uh, system uh, and for the shoes is uh, is also uh, talk about the labor but the painter labor so if you have different when I I talk about the community it's uh, really open it's uh, the artistic uh, community and blue color community. I work with, a, uh, I don't know if it's a good word, but with a gypsy, uh, for example, with a Jeanette, all pipe of copper uh, come from the, the garbage. 
because I need some people and uh, he pick up something, uh, some material in the garbage. So I asked to these people to make a, an exchange. Uh, so he, he came back to my studio with the pipe of uh, this pipe and I gave some olive oil. I exchange this with, uh, so the idea of exchange is very important in my, in my, in my work, in my, yeah, construction. Uh, so, uh, yeah, all time is, uh, it's here. This idea of exchange uh, for just material to material or, but generally we don't talk about the money. Yeah. So. <laughs> We talk about yeah for, for 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 this thing for the for the pipe of copper it's like we talk about the oil olive oil so uh, because I make some olive oil in Portugal so I love this idea to to can exchange uh, with no pressure with just uh, with the <clears throat> idea of valor or value and. It's quite, it's quite interesting what you're saying. It makes me think that actually, like, one of your life project, which is uh, a home um, that that you have in Portugal, is some so, somehow also based on um, that uh, exchange uh, yeah. national yeah. Uh, system. Uh, you basically invite artists to to other artists peers to kind of produce or make things for the home and you exchange uh, works oh. in or oh. olive oil in exchange. Yeah, or sometimes yeah. Uh, some... oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone has uh, questions, I mean you can use the chat or raise your hand and uh, you're happy, to, I mean you're welcome to to, to ask and join the conversation. Um, I wanted, I have to... <laughs> you need a translation because I'm not sure if I got it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have one question related to the title of the exhibition, so to Cédric. I mean, that that Richard came up with and it's... it's um, poem actually maybe we can listen to it if you want to um, because uh, can you see can you still see my screen yeah. yes um, basically on this website uh, which is basically like um, document artist an organization that is um, referencing lots of uh, artists and, uh, and news um, and here there is a page dedicated to the show um, and what uh, we did is basically to to get lots of recordings, so a thing that um, infuse uh, the exhibition. So we have, so this is the English part. Um, there is a reading of the text itself. There is a reading of the poem um, that gave its title to the show by William Carlos Williams, read by another artist called Dominique White. It's very short, so we can do it. <laughs> it's not good. And yeah. Please. So much depends upon a red will barrow, glazed with rain, water, beside the white chickens. So that, that's a good <laughs> That's a very, very short poem. And basically this poet is like, uh, also has like, um, I mean, three different kind of origins, Puerto Rican, American, and, um, and, and but I think he is, is, is praised specifically for the si simplicity um, of his poetry. But I think that title entails um, a lot in relation to um, this idea of labor with the barrow, the mention of the barrow. At the same time, there is that mention of the red, which also has a lot to do I mean, in relation to how uh, we read um, things of his sculptures uh, and how uh, some of the elements literally become paintings. I mean, the, one of the work uh, in the show um, which which somehow can be can be seen as the 
the origin uh, of the of the of the show is this one, um, and from far and even up close because of the use of that uh, glass um, material or the, the the kind of weeds that are within the sh the sculpture turn into like just abstract uh, colors um, basically. Um, I realize that there is a lot of things that we haven't said. <laughs> <laughs> because this capture is like, I mean, it's in the text, so maybe, but uh, this capture is like so interesting in, in uh, again, the way it's, um, the, the way it exists in the world, because it's, uh, it's a sculpture that exists in the garden. It's a sculpture that Wilfried uh, produced a few years ago, and um, that uh, someone has in their garden uh, in uh, near Grenoble. Um, outside um, and so the sculpture itself keeps growing it just exists it just has a life of, of its own um, basically and we feel had to go to 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 go get it and then it will go back <laughs> there um, our, it was quite interesting uh, to, to think about yeah where all the kind of different components of the show are coming okay. from um, and and it's often uh, kind of travels that Wilfried had to do by himself, sometimes uh, to the risk of his life, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is also this specific uh, element of the show as well that, that is uh, uh, quite important. I was talking about it earlier because of the way those two silicon, um, that, that mix of the two silicones is infusing the, um, the different joints uh, of, of the sculpture, um, actually the shape of, of it itself, I mean, there was a, an idea and a desire to kind of like insert this element in the space. So it really fits at the, at the very end, uh, um, the space uh, of Atlantis and it gives that like perspective, but the um, Wilfrey was in, interested in, uh, a sculpture um, by Giacometti. Uh, talks... Comment? Grand Cusy. Grand Cusy! Grand Cusy! Called um, Force d'un jeune homme. Ouais. Men torso. Um, um, there was this idea of elevating the sculptures, of like having them displayed on, on this, but Obviously, it also has like a relationship to this idea of precarious architecture um, as well. And there is that specific detail, if you want to say something about, about this, Wilfried. Um, uh, so this piece, uh, so the name is Torso uh, of a Young Man. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, you can have different feeling with this piece. It's like... Uh, uh, podium, it could like a podium, but uh, in the end, it's not uh, it's not just a podium. It's it's the reference of uh, all sculpture, and for 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 the short story, when I was a truck driver, one time I came in uh, in Paris, and I I made this piece of uh, Brancusi, and it was for me a very special moment. So after that, I decided to, to be an artist. So this piece is very important for me. And uh, for the show, uh, yeah, you can, you, can, you can see it's the same thing. It, it, you have different way and it's your choice. So you can, you can see the, this piece like a podium, like a reference of fashion, of uh, different things or you can see this uh, this piece like a, a reference of um, a suburb, uh, uh, terrace. Uh, yeah, terrace. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but for me, it's um, it's a mix of a lot of things, and the thing is very important. You can you can work on the top of the of this uh, this uh, this uh, this piece so it's also the idea of uh, liberty you know uh, so you can you can decide if you want to uh, or not so this thing is uh, 
the idea of liberty is uh, it's everywhere in the, in this space in this mm -hmm. in this idea of uh, on this uh, sculpture and uh, i make uh, i make uh, this um, this piece with uh, with a, a guy from uh, Ghana, Ghana, uh, Ghana. So it's a refugee, and uh, I meet this guy in my uh, new studio, and we talk a lot about the situation, and uh, we decide together to 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 try to make this piece. So. Um, uh, so it's a, it's another collaboration and it's another also community so uh, yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so thank you yeah thank you very much Wilfried and Cedric um, uh, for the the presentation um, so for this virtual tour we hope we could uh, we could be in Marseille and see the exhibition in real and um, it is still on until uh, until the end of November is that it yeah right yeah. Yeah, so if, if the situation is getting better, we hope some of you will be able to, to come to Marseille. Um, I just, I wanted to, um, to close this uh, conversation. Uh, if anyone has got more questions, feel free to ask. Um, um, Wilfried, I wanted to um, add the fact that um, you are preparing um, a solo show together with uh, Pernod Ricard Foundation in Portugal yeah. for next yeah. year. Next year, and uh, another with, uh, with uh, in the Friche Belle de May uh, in next year also. Also, 2021, yeah. Friche Belle de May. 21 or 22, uh, we decide. Ah, 22, yeah. Friche Belle de May is yeah. located in Marseille too, and we will be, yeah, so, and uh, yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Wilfried. And uh, Cédric, yes, so you are, right now, you are, uh, <laughs> you are opening a show at Palais de Tokyo. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> I mean, kind of opening as soon as tomorrow. Um, oh, wow. Um, yeah, so actually, I just received the message about it. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's coming together. I think it's going to be quite different from what Palais de Tokyo has done before. So um, yeah, we're very excited to, to kind of unveil. Uh, and it's coming together with a website and um, lots of events as well so hopefully we can meet again somehow um oh someone asked a question wait ah yeah yes, we have two Sorry. questions yeah uh so diana maybe you want to ask yes me? so i didn't know exactly what the protocol was whether i should Sorry. write the question or uh, ask it myself uh, so first of all thank you so much uh, wilfried and cedric for the presentation um it was great to, to see this exhibition uh, virtually. Um, so it's more like a comment than a question uh, about this um, idea of hide and seek and of blocking the view of the whole setting of the exhibition, uh, because it feels almost like uh, the body of the viewer is a constituent uh, element of the show. The fact that the body is in space, uh, almost uh, become a, a performative component of the show. I think it's, uh, it's really interesting that the way you move and the dynamic of your body influences the way you see. So this relation between the body of the viewer and what they are able to see, I found really interesting. And uh, this relation between the absent body in the show that Wilfried talked about and the present body in the show, which is the body of the viewer. So I was wondering if uh, you had this uh, um, relation or this dichotomy in mind when you created the whole setting of the show. Definitely. I mean, it's it's something that uh, kind of was in, very present in our conversation. And then as soon as we started to like get into the space um, to work on on the on the whole project, um, was something that was, and it's something that was also like I mean, I think it's something that that's been 
present in Wilfrid's practice for, for some time anyway, mm -hmm. um, in, in the first place. I mean, it's interesting to go back to uh, some of his previous installations uh, and to, to, to kind of get a sense of how bodies uh, always have a relationship with the sculptures. They're always thought of as uh, having a certain relationship uh, with, with the people approaching them or not being able to approach them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, thank you. We have another question uh, from Zorana Djakovic. Can you introduce yourself, Zorana? Hi, I'm, I, uh, I turned off uh, the video because I have some problems with the internet and then probably you heard uh, also the voice of my kids, I guess, <laughs> that before. So I apologize, uh, but um, thank you for, uh, thank you uh, to both of you. This is very precious because uh, this kind of experience is uh, new for all of us and we are all somehow looking uh, what will be and what could be some uh, proper uh, format for present the works in the future and uh, also uh, what uh, I would like to know, what do you think uh, about actually the event of the openings? Because um, all other things uh, we manage to do somehow, in a sense, artist talks, uh, uh, Instagram talks, uh, then some kind of uh, guided tours that we uh, do, like uh, uh, that people actually call. And uh, but uh, what uh, what uh, what to do with the openings? Because the openings actually are uh, one of the are very important part of uh, each exhibition and of each uh, physical venue in which we present the work. So I just would like to know what are your thoughts about um, possibilities uh, uh, to work uh, on uh, further on the openings? Um, I think this is a large question, broad question. I think it, it goes beyond this show itself. Uh, I don't have an answer because uh, for Wilfried we had an opening. <laughs> we just have lots of gel and lots of um, masks to give away. Um, yeah, so it's, it's difficult to answer. I didn't really, I don't think, uh, I think it's like a broader conversation about like, yeah, it's, it's much more larger than this specific uh, exhibition. And I, I actually, to me, I mean, to me, it's interesting to think about exhibitions, the ones that I had, that had to close down because of the lockdown, the one that we're not able to, to, um, I mean, does what is it the opening that makes a show exist? That's basically on a metaphysical level. <laughs> the question that I would ask myself, um, and I'm not sure it is actually. I think the opening is like part of a ritual that is proper to our um, to the contemporary art sphere, um, but it's not a necessary step. Mm -hmm. And how do you do, for example, at Palais de Tokyo right now? How do you open the exhibition? We just have we just have like a, a maximum capacity, um, but we we will have an opening, and we have that free. We have like a day um, with free entrance on on Friday, for instance. Um, the entire day. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. We had the we had the chance to be able to be flexible, I guess. I mean, the the obviously we had to change. Palitoko is known for being open from midday to midnight, and now it's uh, ten to seven. <laughs> so that's quite that's quite a change. Uh, but let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, because we have to explain that we do have a curfew in France, and since couple of days, and we have to close down. I mean, we have to. We're not able to go out. Uh, after 9 p.m. So in the evening. So that's why I changed all the plans, especially for this week, because this is the Paris Art Week. And we, I mean, there were loads of openings planned. Um, like yesterday, there was also the Marcel Duchamp Prize. Uh, so, the, the, so everything has changed. Uh, so everything is happening earlier. So mm -hmm. it's very different for, for us. 
and the, the gallery nights also is uh, normally happening on Thursday night in Paris and um, so it's happening in the daytime then so yeah so we have to adapt ourselves yeah. <laughs> to the situation so yeah thank you very much thank you to all of you if there are no more questions we're uh, closing this uh, conversation so thank you so much Wilfried uh, thank, thank you, you so much, Cédric, <laughs> and uh, so I wish you good luck for the, the for the exhibition. And um, then I, I will see you uh, all of you um, in half an hour. We have another talk uh, starting at eleven uh, with curator Alia Septi, the Manifesta curator, uh, talking to Sahar Wadou. So see you later then. Thank That's you really nice as well. <laughs> Bye -bye. Sorry. That's going to be very nice as well. I will, I will uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day.